This video is about how stress causes leaky gut syndrome, and I'm posting it on September 2nd, 2019, as Hurricane Dorian moves into Florida. Certainly a stressful scenario for well, people in the Bahamas are getting hammered right now, and then uh, the rest of the East Coast from Florida all the way up through North Carolina. People are stressing. So what happens to the gut when you stress? I'm going to show you. This is a really cool paper. The title is Stress Induces Endotoxemia, Low-Grade Inflammation by Increasing Barrier Permeability. So this is obviously a paper written uh, for healthcare practitioners. So I'm going to break it down so it's easy for you, if you're not one, to understand what this means. So endotoxemia, first of all, emia means in your blood, like anemia, so emia in your blood. So endotox means endotoxin circulating your blood. Now, what is, endo, what is endotoxin? Well, endotoxin, another word for it is lipopolysaccharide, which is this acronym right here, LPS, right in the middle of the screen. So LPS is endotoxin, and when you absorb too much of it, you get endotoxemia. To watch how your diet does this, you can watch this video that I did back in July 26. The biggest dietary drivers comes from so-called foods made from refined sugar, flour, omega-6 oils, and trans fats. So Americans eat way too much of that stuff. So that's what endotoxin is. It is a it comes off of the cell wall of these gram-negative bacteria. So this article that I just mentioned before gives us this picture right here. I'm going to break it down a little bit to make it easier to understand what it is because some of this stuff, obviously, JC, ML, MLC, K, what does all that stuff mean? So SDLT is just a glucose co-transporter, not a big deal. Don't even need to worry about glucose here. That's just what it happens to be called. And then MLCK is an enzyme called myosin light chain kinase, no big deal. Enzyme. Enzymes activate stuff, basically. So over here you can see junctional complex, JC. Now typically when people talk about the gut and barrier, they reuse the term tight junctions, which is just one of the components of the junctional complex. So this tight junction system right here keeps stuff from being absorbed from the gut lumen into body circulation. So as long as these junctions are tight, nothing gets through. This is what it looks like, or the way they did it for this article, how they show a relaxation of the tight junctions, a separation of the intestinal cells, and in come the bacteria. Okay, so let's look at how this works a little bit. Ah, before we go a little further, let me just go over this. So cytokines. Cytokines are pro-inflammatory proteins. So let me show you uh, a little bit about this. So this is a, a video I did back in April 2017, and where I'm going to circle right here are three important, the most famous pro-inflammatory cytokines. They are proteins. They're pro-inflammatory proteins that should be produced short term and only after stressful needs and then they get their levels should be should go back to normal. The problem is when we live on sugar, flour, and refined oils, these guys become elevated. So we do not want elevated cytokines in circulation for more than an acute needed moment because that's what cytokines are. Now you can think about TNF TNF that I'm kind of making go away right now, TNF, here's how you, how you can relate to this cytokine. It is the cytokine that is targeted by three drugs that have television commercials. One's called Enbril, one's called Remicade, the other one is called Humira. There are others, but those are the three most famous drugs that block TNF. So you can certainly see lots of people run around with too much TNF, mostly people with autoimmune disease. Okay, let's get back to the image. So, sympathetic nervous system, SNS. SNS stands for your, I mean, sympathetic, but that's not a really good word. You should really think of it in terms of the fight or flight nervous system. So when you get stressed out, the fight or flight nervous system turns on. It releases norepinephrine at the intestinal cells. It'll activate this glucose transporter, which then activates the enzyme. Look what happens. You get relaxation of the junctional complex, the tight junctions, and in comes the endotoxin. The endotoxin then stimulates intestinal immune cells. These immune cells dump the cytokines I just mentioned, IL-1, 6, TNF being the most famous. 
the, the cytokines then also act the kinase enzyme to further relax the tight junction, and in comes the endotoxin. So this is how stress activating the fight or flight nervous system causes these tight junctions to relax. It allows now for bacterial toxins, bacteria, undigested food proteins to enter into the body. So this image here where we see tight barriers between the intestinal cells, relax barrier, in come the toxins, and in comes the inflammation for the entire body, and that augments the uh, leaky gut scenario in the gut itself. So that is how stress induces leaky gut syndrome. So again, if you want to learn more about endotoxin, you can watch this video that I did back in 16, 2016, and then this video from 2017. If you like this information, you can cruise right over to my website, dflame.com, score the Dflame Diet book. It's about 250 pages about as much as I could find about how diet induces, reduces inflammation. This book is about how to control the eating beast that all of us must contend with. And this is my first specialty book that was just published recently uh, in May-ish of 2019. And you can go right to the website. It'll take you to uh, uh, the Am Amazon if you want to buy one book. And this is these are the, my, the, the books that I have available on, on, on Amazon. Okay, thanks for your time, and uh, if you are in the path of Dorian, batten down the hatches, as, as they say, because if it comes on shore, it could be pretty nasty and really stressful.